So one of the first things we have to be concerned about when we're prepping a blank to turn on the lathe is we have to worry about the end grain. Now these have already been milled down flush with the tubes so what I want to do is I want to seal because this is a feather blank I don't want any moisture or sanding debris to get wicked inside of the feathers or along the edge of them so what I want to do is I'm going to take some ultra thin and I'm going to put it around the edges and it's going to wick in and it's going to seal that tube so that nothing can get between the tube and, and the clear resin. Remember, the clear resin is going to magnify anything that gets under it, so we want to make sure that's protected. Secondly, I want to seal the wood the same way. So this end grain here, because when I apply my, turn this down and apply my finish to the surface, the last thing I want is any moisture or debris to wick underneath my clear finish after I'm done applying that. All right, here we have a piece of red oak burl. Now, as you can see, red oak is always prone. When you get a burl, you'll have all these little micro cracks in there. And you'll see them from the sanding because they'll get filled with a little bit of dust. But what you want to do is seal that. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a paper towel. And I roll it up and then flatten it. And I'm going to turn the lathe on. We're spinning about 800 RPMs. Now, I'm just going to apply a little bit to the paper towel and I'm going to work across. Give it a light spray of the glue dry and I'm going to wait for about 20 or 30 seconds. I'm going to make sure that that gets in where I want. Now as you look you'll see the crack disappears because the sanding dust is gone but it doesn't mean it's all the way filled. So you're going to want to do that a couple of times and if you're really concerned with something that's really deep then come in here and just squeeze a little bit on the surface and you'll watch how that wicks in and disappears. You can kind of use that, that stem to direct it where you want it. And that way I know it's wicking in as deep as it can to fill that little crack and void. Just a light mist of glue dry and we're good to go. Now what I'm going to do is I would apply maybe one or two more coats of the Ultra Thin and then over the top of that, I would switch to the orange label, fill and finish, and put four or five layers and finish my pen. Now, if you've ever applied a CA finish to a pen, you'll notice sometimes you start to get some ridges on here from the lathe turning as you apply the glue. And one thing we'll do is we'll use some 600 grit or 400 grit sandpaper. We'll sand it off. And then I like to turn the lathe on high and then I'll use some steel wool, extra fine steel wool as the lathe's spinning and kind of knock down all that and make it smooth. But it still introduces scratches into our finish. So here's where the ultra thin fill and finish comes in handy. I like to use ultra thin both as a base coat before I start my CA finish and as a final scratch filler after I've leveled it out and removed any ridges. It fills in them scratches makes everything nice and smooth, and now I'm ready to move towards micro mesh and polishing. Well, what do you think? Looks pretty easy? It's because it is. Glue Boost is easy to use. Not only does it give you a high durable quality finish, but it also saves you a ton of time in your finishing process. So if you haven't tried it, give their fill and finish products a try. And for those of you that are using it, wait till you get some of this. You're going to love it. Rick, thank you and the team for coming up with the new product. I'm going to be using a lot of it. I'm John Underhill. Thanks for watching.